This is the simplest formula for the projection, right? For the vector projection. But there's, there's more than one way to write this formula. And so in fact, maybe we should just revise, right? Um, you know, we've also seen, actually I need a bit more space, so I'm gonna move this down. We've also seen this before with the dot product itself. The dot product itself has more than one way to be calculated. Um, we proved how these two formulas are equal to each other, but it really depends on what information you have access to, right? So the definition we've already just used today, what you need is the magnitudes of the two vectors and the angle in between, right? What was the other definition again? Or formula, I should say? Just the multiplication of the um, x, y, and z coordinates together. Yeah, absolutely. So we take the product of the components. So here's the first product. Um, the x's, here's the y product, and then here's the z product, right? Now, of course, what you can do is, if you, if you have all the components, you can work out the magnitude, and then you can also work out the angle. But um, if you just have the components and you just want to go straight to the dot product, we'd use the second one, right? Now, in exactly the same way, um, there are multiple formulas for the projection. It just depends, like you move between them depending on what information you've got, right? So just as this is true, uh, where am I going to write this? So too, for the projection. Now, can I just ask you guys, do you know how many forms there are that we sort of commonly use? I've just shown you there's one, but there's more than one. Does anyone, how many have you encountered, I guess? Two now, I guess. Just yeah, letters. just two? Okay, so I'm, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a third one, okay? And um, they are all actually pretty similar to each other, as you'll see, but it just depends on, on what information you've got, okay? So I'm going to draw like a big fat curly brace here. So the first one is the one we already just saw, right? So first you get the scalar part, the length of the shadow, like so, and then you multiply by the direction of the shadow. So that's the direction of the base vector, okay? So I would call this one, this one here is the most concise version. So if you want to memorize something, this is the least to memorize, okay? Now, another way you can say this is you can actually remember the, the dot product is just magnitude of one vector, magnitude of the other, and then you multiply by the angle in between. But just have a look for a second, right? Here's one vector, but this vector here, b hat, it's a, it's a unit vector. So what's the magnitude of this vector by definition? It's, wow. just, it's just one, right? So when you go and calculate the dot product, that, that magnitude just sort of cancels out, right? So therefore, what we can say is, um, it's the magnitude of the first vector, the magnitude of the second one, which is just one, and then it's the angle in between. So this is another way of saying that scalar projection. This is the length of the shadow. And then just like before, um, we have to multiply by uh, the direction so that we, we're headed in the right way, okay? So uh, when would you use this version? Well, if in the question, either you're given the angle or you were asked the angle, like you had to work it out in an earlier part, if, um, if, the, if the angle is known, then you would just use this one right because it just cuts out some of the work for you okay all right now the third and final uh, form of this formula you remember <laughs> I highlighted how strange it was that this concise formula has b hat and b hat in it again you're like what's this obsession with b hats in the same formula okay well this last version of the formula is the weirdest one um, and I'm going to show it to you um, as, as a sort of explanation for why it's weird but actually it ends up being very very useful and maybe this is the one you've seen before okay um, all right how do I explain this um, see how you've got this b hat here and this b hat here if I gave you some vector b what would you do to it to work out the unit vector that corresponds to it we actually did it earlier what do you do Divide it by the magnitude. Yeah, you divide by the magnitude, okay? Now here you can see you've actually got b hat happening twice. So if you wanted um, to not have the b hats there, you would have to have the original vector and divide by its magnitude, but you do it twice, right? You do it twice. So instead of working out, like dividing through by the square root, that's how you work out magnitude, right? Yeah, you, you said it. When you square that magnitude, which you know is going to be a square root because of Pythagoras, when you square that, all you just get is the, the components, right? So it'd just be um, x uh, b squared and then uh, y b squared and then z b squared, right? So it's just all the, the Pythagorean 
the three other parts of the Pythagorean quadruple, okay? Now, <laughs> this is the funniest and most ridiculous part, right? A way you can work this out is by taking that vector, B, and then doing the dot product to itself. You've actually seen this before. It was in the previous exercise, right? So what I can do is, are you ready? I can say, don't do A dot B hat, just do the original vector, right? And then don't multiply that by B hat, just multiply that by the original vector. But then in order to get your magnitudes right, you have to divide by that, the magnitudes twice, right? So the way you can do that is by dividing by B and its dot product against itself. Um, that is one of the most ridiculous formulas I've ever seen because you're like, wow, someone really likes B a lot. But I hope you can kind of see why it is what it is. Um, because what you're doing is this part here gives you one of the B hats and then this part here gives you the other B hat. You're not dividing B by B. Um, when you do this thing down the bottom, you, you just get that, that scalar, right? So you're dividing by the magnitude effectively. Um, so even though it's a bit strange, right, what this actually does is it is, um, it's automating the process of working out what B hat is. You, I'm going to give you an example in a second. Um, this automates the calculation of the unit vector. Um, if you want to think about it this way, um, do you guys remember learning the quadratic formula the first time? Yeah. So it's, we, we've actually rehearsed it just recently, it's um, this, right? Now I don't know how many of you um, realize that all the quadratic formula is doing is it's taking a normal quadratic like so, and then what it's doing is, is it's completing the square. But the formula takes out your need to remember the steps of completing the square. It, it's all just built into the algebra of the quadratic formula. And that's exactly what this version of the, the projection formula does. It takes out you having to remember, oh, I need to work out the, um, uh, the unit vector, okay? All right, so three forms. Uh, do you guys have any questions? I can hear a lot of talking there, but I don't know if it's a classroom outside or something like that. No, sorry, that was just us discussing Ryan looking at the quadratic formula yesterday. Okay, perfect timing. All right, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is very funny. By the way, just as a very short note, I know this is, sounds silly, but every time I look at this last formula here with all the B's in it, um, I actually remember a music teacher I had in year seven, and he was he was saying the notes of a, of a piece so that we could play it on piano, and the note that he, the, the music he was playing, it, it had um, like five notes of B in a row and he literally just said this. So I actually hear his voice singing that song when I look at this formula. So that's completely irrelevant, but anyway. Let's have a look at one example, shall we? Now, the computation of this is, I hope, going to be pretty straightforward. Um, but the first question is, you have three different ways to work out a projection of one vector onto another. I, there are the three formulas here. And I want you to tell me which of these three formulas is probably the most useful. Now there's one formula that hopefully we can all eliminate fairly quickly as an option. Which one is not that relevant? It's the, uh, yeah, it's the, it's, I think I heard it. Sorry, I can hear a lot of, yeah, thank you, Mrs. Isles. Um, it's the one in the middle, right? Because we don't have an angle given to us and we're not asked to work out the angle. So I'm not going to work out the angle if I don't have to, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to not worry about, I'll put a, a, an X against this middle one. So then it's a case of the, the other two. Now, remember we said that this last version, Oh, sorry, the first version requires you to work out what B hat is. Let me just very quickly, there's, there's B there on the right hand side, right? Let's just uh, think about what would be required if I were to work out B hat, right? Well, think about this with me. It's going to be B and I'm going to have to divide by its magnitude. Now, what is its magnitude? Well, it's going to be, I have to take the X and the Y and the Z components and I square them, right? Like so. Now, do you guys remember um, an earlier, in an earlier lesson I gave you guys a question and it was very obvious that I had planned it so that the numbers would be kind of nice. When you took a square root, it all ended up as integers, right? When you have a look at this, you're like, oh, gross, uh, that square root of three, it's, it's not going to go anywhere, right? Um, and so what you're going to get as b hat is actually going to be, um, b hat will be equal to, here's the original vector up the top, so it's going to be, all right, you ready? Minus 
one on root three, then one on root three, and then one on root three again. That's the unit vector. That's really gross, <laughs> right? Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can actually look very quickly, like if you're wondering, should I, which one should I use, right? In this case, you can see the unit vector is not nice and neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for this third version of the formula, and you're going to see actually it's going to be, um, it's going to be really nice to work with. So let's just have a go. You guys can help me out. The projection of A onto B. Uh, I'm going to show you the way that I, I write this. So um, I've got the two, uh, uh, rather not the two, I've got the fraction in, in the um, front there, and then I'm going to have that vector b like so. So I'm just going to write the vector b right away because there's no uh, calculation or computation required there. And now I'm going to think about the two dot products, okay? So um, I've got to do a onto b first, um, dot product of a to b. So you can see here the numbers, right? There's one number here, there's a number there. So can you guys tell me, multiply your x's and then your y's and then your z's, what am I going to get? Uh, just tell me the, the products. Negative 4, positive 2, and then minus 3. Okay, you really got to watch out for your signs there, right? It's like maximum number of signs to be confusing. Okay, very good, that's that. Uh, we've already actually sort of thought about the dot product of b onto itself because we sort of were thinking about it over here. This is just going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1, like so, okay? So then when you have a look at this, you're like, oh, okay, this is just going to be on the numerator. That's negative uh, 5. On the denominator, it's um, a 3. And then actually, I don't need to, I, I mean, I could multiply this in, but I don't need to, right? This scalar multiple that's it. That, that's, the whole, that's the whole question. That is, number one, um, uh, this part here is the, um, uh, the, the magnitude of it, and then you know its direction over here from the right-hand side. Okay? Now, just have a think, right? If you had used this formula, basically what's going to happen is all those root 3s are going to cancel with another root 3 is going to appear. So it's a bit of a mess um, to end up with all those thirds and then get rid of those thirds. Um, so there's no real reason to, to go using that formula. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions? How are you doing so far? So while the first formula is the most concise, it's probably the most annoying unless uh, A has already asked you to find the unit vector. Yeah, that's right. If the unit vector um, came up somewhere, um, maybe like you said in an earlier part of the question, or alternatively, um, sometimes the unit vector is actually um, easy to calculate. Like they've handed you a, a vector where the unit vector is supposed to be simple to calculate. Um, and you can see what I did was over here on the right hand side, what I checked was, is it easy to calculate? Uh, gross, no thanks, right? Um, I would Normally I would not write this. I would kind of do this a little bit mentally. Um, if you have a look and you think about these numbers in here, um, if, I, if I had given you, say, for example, negative 1, 4, 4, um, because I've been doing a lot of these questions, I recognize that as three quarters of a Pythagorean quadruple. So I'll be like, oh, it'll work, right? Um, it'll be convenient. I'll get integers out, and so I'll, I'll run with it. Um, but in this case, I could mentally see already that I don't, I don't want to do it. It's going to introduce thirds, and I'm probably going to get rid of them. Um, but here's the, here's the nice thing. If you choose the wrong one, quote unquote, the wrong one, you will still arrive at the same answer. It's just a little more work, that's all. Okay?